Welcome to UCLA Newsweek. In this edition, environmental economist Matthew Kahn gives us fresh perspective on climate change. Capitalist growth has caused climate change, but it's also going to allow us to adapt to climate change. A surprising analysis of the U.S. military's counter-narcotics policy in Afghanistan with Mark Kleiman of the School of Public Affairs. Our current efforts are not merely futile, they're counterproductive, and we ought to redirect our drug policy thing away from trying to solve our drug problem in some other country and toward the problems that our drug problems create for those countries. And in brief, the next phase in the fight against computer hackers. An old TV show gets a new treatment, mapping mammalian gene interactions, and author Ray Bradbury celebrates his 90th birthday. Environmental economist Matthew Kahn drops by Studio 210B to discuss his new book, Climatopolis, and the reaction from the left and right. Climatopolis, how our cities will thrive in the hotter world. And this is an optimistic book, which takes it for granted that climate change is coming. But in the face of climate change, uh, how will we as urbanites, how will our cities, whether it's Los Angeles, London, uh, San Francisco, New York City, how will different cities around the world uh, cope and adapt in the face of climate change? And what distinguishes my book from other books out there is my optimism. Um, and my optimism isn't based on my being Nostradamus or able to see the future. My optimism is based on my understanding of economics and my, uh, my vision that uh, self-interested firms and households will, in the hotter future, take steps to protect themselves and innovate in ways that help to keep our high quality of life in our cities going, e even in a hotter world. Could the counter-narcotics efforts of the U.S. forces in Afghanistan actually make the insurgency worse? UCLA professor of public policy Mark Kleiman gives us his take. The inquiry of the, of the day was whether the international supply control effort, both eradicating drug crops and trying to uh, interfere with drug dealers in, in source and transit countries, and then border interdiction, uh, can actually make a difference for the U.S. drug supply. Uh, and my argument was no. Uh, the quantity of drugs sold in the U.S. is determined by how much drug Amer drugs American users want to buy, uh, and that depends almost entirely on conditions in the U.S. A very small portion of the retail price of heroin, for example, is the price that's paid to the farmer for poppy, so for opium. So eradicating poppy crops is not a useful thing to do. And in fact, it's worse than useless insofar as it drives prices up in the source countries. It enriches the criminals there. Uh, in Afghanistan, that's the Taliban and the warlords and the corrupt officials. In Mexico, it's the five or six big organizations that are now shooting up northern Mexico. So I claim that our, our current efforts are not merely futile, they're counterproductive. And we ought to redirect our drug policy thinking away from trying to solve our drug problem in some other country and toward the problems that our drug problems create for those countries, the violence that's generated in Mexico by the U.S. drug market. That's something I think we could do something about if we stop chasing the imaginary goal of reducing the supply of drugs to the U.S. And now, a look at more knowledge created at UCLA. Today's computer chips are manufactured in a way that leaves them vulnerable to hardware hackers, says electrical engineering professor John Villasenor. But the silicon chips of the future will have what he calls a built-in police force to prevent the sabotage of computers, cell phones, and a host of other popular interactive devices. The UCLA Film and Television Archive has digitally restored every known episode of the 1950s sitcom The Goldbergs. It took close to a year to retouch this groundbreaking series about a Jewish family living in New York, and the archive has now made the series available on DVD. UCLA researchers have created the first complete and comprehensive map of gene interactions in mammals, including humans. Their effort could help shed light on the development of cancer and other diseases and offer new approaches to treatment. Turning 90 this week is celebrated author Ray Bradbury, who wrote his classic novel Fahrenheit 451 at UCLA's Powell Library. In order to make it to be 90 years old, you have to love life completely. I have been in love with life every single day of my life. An online birthday tribute can be seen at ucla.edu. For more information on these and other stories, visit newsroom.ucla.edu.